Greetings, my friends. I'm really happy to be here with you today to show you some tips and projects with Sculpey Souffle in Poppy Seed and uh, our beautiful new molds and our clear liquid Sculpey. I've also brought some inclusions out for you today to try and I'm sure you have many at home that you like too. Uh, these uh, Mylar Spangles are particularly pretty and they're available everywhere in the scrapbook section. I've also got uh, this mold from Wilton. It's a fondant mold, I believe. And it is bakeable, but you want to be very careful when you use non sculpy bakeable molds because sometimes they're not bakeable. Uh, these are, uh, these thin molds are absolutely gorgeous and they create a flexible uh, design uh, that you can't achieve with resin. So I'm going to show you how to do these things, uh, give you some ideas, and I'm sure that'll be a springboard for all the ideas that you have. Be sure to uh, preheat your oven. I use it at 325. I get maximum clarity that way without a heat gun. Um, here's some uh, jewelry mold with mica and glitter, and uh, I've got several kinds to use here. I'm going to start by making impressions of the shapes that I want to cut out but just by pressing lightly on top of the mold with my uh, Sculpey Souffle. That's a number one sheet from my uh, Sculpey clay conditioning machine. So this is a really casual part of it. They don't have to be perfect because we're going to press them down in there with our Sculpey Ball Stylus. I just cut them out um, so that they roughly fit into the little shapes. You can do as many as you want to. We're going to do about four today. And I'm going to press them into the mold. Uh, your Sculpey Ball Stylus has got one side on the medium ball that's flat and it's really good for this kind of thing. It gets right down in all the edges and corners. And you're just making sure that the area behind the little pre-drilled hole is uh, nice and sturdy so you can hang it later. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, Christy Friesen. Um, her surface effects, it's a really fine beautiful mica powder. And um, this color is called Tide Pool. You probably have micas at home. You can use your Perlex and your glitters. Uh, mica powder over this black makes a really great effect. And one of the reasons that I do this is because when you have a thin layer of clear over something else, you get really good clarity rather than filling the whole thing up with clear and trying to tint it. So there's different things that you can do. Now you see when I pour my Sculpey uh, clear into this cup, it's got some little uh, areas that are more stringy and dense. Uh, those are the areas that settle down to the bottom of the bottle when it was upside down in that little uh, glass that you saw at the beginning. So all I got to do is stir it up. <clears throat> In real time is probably about 40 seconds. And I'm trying to achieve an even thin texture just like this so that it's nice and uh, smooth. And I'll put it in the mold with my corn stick. My corn sticks, they're the same kind you get for, uh, you know, candied apples. Stuff like that. I love them. They're a little bit more um, substantial than toothpicks. Yeah, very inexpensive. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them on Amazon. And um, we're going to go to the next project. We can bake these all at once or put them in individually. I'm going to put some of this um, clear liquid Sculpey, just a small amount with some alcohol ink. Alcohol ink, when you put it in like this, kind of does whatever it wants to do. Uh, you can leave it um, just partially mixed up for one kind of effect or you can blend it up like this for another kind of effect. You'll find that a high ratio of ink to clear liquid Sculpey um, will cause kind of a shattered marble, kind of like a boiled marble effect and it's really beautiful. You'll see it at the end. <clears throat> so be sure that you, you know, experiment a lot with your effects because Clear Liquid Sculpey can do many more things than resin can, uh, just depending on the heat and the volume of uh, inclusions that you use. Now, this mold is very, very flat, very thin. 
and it makes very thin pieces but you got to remember you can always put them on a clay backing or some people like very light things for earrings so we'll make some of those today I'm going to do uh, two black and two white and that way I'll have lots to play with and think about at the end and I'm just adding that in with my flat blade any kind of um, you know dispensing device that you rig up is good you just don't want to try to just dump it over in there because it, it really does go all over the place uh, this butterfly mold like the mandala mold like the lace mold creates a very light beautiful little effect and it's uh, flexible you know unlike um, resonance so that way if you want to put that on a jar or a votive or you know over a dome you can bend it uh, and resin is very rigid and I, can, I really can't do it with that uh, placing your mica into the mold like this uh, really gives a beautiful light sparkly look that I love and I'm going to use my um, other Christy Friesen uh, in a it's called, color called strength and it's kind of a copper but you can use the micas that you have on hand do all kinds of tests and play with it because you're only going to use a tiniest amount of clear liquid Sculpey. You know, you can't, you really can't lose. So I'll go over this with the squeegee and that's provided for us. And you don't have to be too careful or press too hard. I'm taking that little bit of excess off, but that trims right off with cuticle scissors. So they'll be kind of like a little papery border, a very thin clay. That is not a problem. You just snip it off and you make them just perfect. So here are our jewelry mold pieces. They pop out just like this. I baked them for uh, 15 minutes at 325. Be sure you check your oven about every five minutes. Uh, make sure that everything's going the way you want. And there's my baked um, heart piece and I'm going to put clear over it. Okay. That's one of the ways you really get transparencies, to have something under your clear. I've had great luck with that and I actually haven't used a heat gun on any of these pieces because it came out really clear. So you tuck in your little flowers. These are some dried flowers I got. And you kind of sink the edges a little bit and let it be settled down in there and it will you know kind of go to the bottom and you can put your other flowers in and make sure that your clear liquid sculpey is over the top of it it just turns out really cute here's our butterflies I already trimmed them with the scissors and I took my corn stick and uh, poked out a bunch of those little holes in the uh, butterfly so you'll see in the lace mold and uh, the mandala mold and this one too um, you can go, you know, as, as clear as you want with those holes. You can make them be not there anymore, or you can have them uh, result in just a real fine, light um, coating of your material, your clear liquid. I know you're jelly in my corn sticks. you got to get some, huh? So I poked those through, and they came right out. Now this is a really fun one, and this is another reason that you want to be sure and have liquid clay on hand. Um, I'm using the silver with um, the tip partially open. Uh, the nozzle is adjustable, so when you turn it, you get different um, widths of lines. And then the pressure that you use squeezing the bottle affects it too. So I just have my little paper plate here. I felt confident in... Um, making my design after I had tried it a few times and tested the um, you know amount of pressure needed on the bottle and the amount of open or closing of the cap. So I've got a piece of uh, glass there <clears throat> and a little picture. That's from a, a coloring book that I got at the dollar store. So I'm going to use the shape of the turtle to uh, make my design because I just can't draw a lick. Uh, don't tell anybody, but uh, it's really sad. I, I can't even draw stick people. So I'm going to crib this little uh, shape, but that's about all I'm going to use of this. It's certainly not going to be a copyright problem because it's not going to look anything like this. And I've, uh, as I showed you, uh, tested my um, line width, and I've seen how I want to do it, and I'm going to go around this shape. Uh, if you get a little squished out on one side, you can just correct it with your stick. 
you'll see in the end it's quite forgiving. And like I said, it needs to be because uh, I know you guys can draw. I've seen what you can do, but that would not be me. I've never been able to draw. I'm going to go around here. And this is even sped up, so you can imagine how deadly slow, you know, I am. Outline it all. The little flippers and everything. See all those designs in the middle? I'm so sure. I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to make my own uh, designs that I want to make that I can make. Just some curly cues. And uh, make something different on the flippers. Kind of give it a little bit of variety. Going over all my lines. I can clearly see that probably a little bit better than you can on the, on the film. But I can see where I'm going working on this glass. And we'll fix up the flippers. Make sure there's a little bit of interest everywhere. It doesn't have to see, be perfectly um, symmetrical, and you'll notice that in the end product, that it looks really cute just the way it is. And I almost forgot to do the eyes. So you got to do his eyes. You don't want a blind turtle. There we go. Put that in there. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to remove it, uh, I have it taped down so it doesn't wiggle around. I just cut that tape, pick up my glass, and that fits in my toaster oven. And it looks like that. So we're going to bake that for 10 minutes, and it's created lines that we can now fill in with colors. And thank goodness for lines, right? I wouldn't know how to color without them. So I'm going to tint up uh, just a partial bottle of clear liquid Sculpey that I have. I need um, some greenish tones for some other things that I'm doing, so I don't mind tinting that last, you know, third of a bottle. But you can tint it in all in a cup and uh, use it like that if you want to. So I've got some alcohol ink. I only put a couple drops in that third of a bottle because I wanted a pale, pale green that in the end product is is almost transparent. It's just the lightest of tints. You can see right through it. And I'll drop it into different areas on my turtle. And this is the most relaxing thing. Um, that's another thing I really like about liquid clay. You know, the working time is endless. You know, I could I could go make a sandwich. This stuff isn't going anywhere. It's not going to partially set up. And it's not going to, you know, run out of the holes. It's just really forgiving. And I'm going to drop it in like this. I don't have to go exactly to the lines right now because I can spread it with my uh, corn stick, you know. I can make it look however I want it to. So you just put it where it's going to um, be and then spread it to the edges and make it as even as you want to using kind of a light pressure. It's flowing really well because, you know, we, we mixed it up before so we know our clear liquid Sculpey is the right uh, viscosity. Just choose places to put it. Uh, always take your time on stuff like this. I mean, you don't have to be as slow as I am, but, you know, you don't need to rush it. This is the most enjoyable thing, and uh, I don't know. I like it to last. I'm going to go a little darker with my green. And I'll go in, you know, kind of stages of greenness as we go. I'll put this uh, back in the uh, little cup again so that I can mix some more green into it. When you're close to the bottom of the bottle, you know, it's not so easy to mix in there. So I put it back in my medicine cup. Uh, those are a hundred of them for about six bucks. Uh, that's uh, the typical price of those cups. And you know, when you're through with this, um, you can just wipe them out with a paper towel. It's not sticky like resin. Even when you get it on your hands, you can just rub it off. Uh, and that works for me because I, I'm not good with stickiness. Here's my next shade of green. I can imagine how pretty that would be with, you know, all different colors. I took a little bit of the darker green, kind of swirled it through the, the palest one to make that look like glass has, you know. I'm going to bake that. 
for, you know, 10-15 minutes. Check it every five minutes. That's my recommendation. Now, I threw this in here for you because, you know, it's kind of hanging around waiting for things to bake. And so I completed a couple of um, projects. And I want to show you how easy it is to make some earrings out of those shapes. I've got my head pin. And I just put it through that pearl. And I'll make a 90 degree bend in the uh, wire. And then I'll snip it. And there's a place on my cuticle that I've been using to make these loops for almost 40 years now. It kind of goes there automatically. But you'll have a spot that that you can kind of count on to be uniform. You don't really have to measure it. The more you do it, the easier it gets. I'm going to give it one twist and let it go. Let's say you make an eye and give it another twist. Now, normally I would close that, but I'm going to hang that from my eye screw. And here's how you do an eye screw, and it's so easy with liquid clay, it's impossible with resin. Believe me, I've tried. Those little uh, eye screws just snap from metal fatigue when you try to get them into resin. It's just not going to happen. So I took my push pin. You could use your Sculpey needle tool. <clears throat> that little push pin is kind of a nice scale for something so small. And I made a starter hole. I've got my uh, itty bitty eye screw and there's no stress putting it in here. It's not going to snap off because this is soft. I'm putting it in the black section so that we don't take a chance on the screw showing through in the front, which I've done by mistake. Uh, don't want to keep doing that. It's almost easier to kind of just turn the big part when you first start than you can turn the bottom part. Let's make sure it's straight. And then you got your pearl down there. And it's, uh, you know, as we said, is only partially closed. So I've left it open just enough to hook it through there. I'm going to turn it around so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So I'm going to hook it through my uh, eye screw and close it and put a ring on the top. So what have you got? You've got an eye screw, a head pin, a pearl. Uh, two rings and a wire. And that second ring is for hanging it from the uh, ear wire. See? And they're so cute. You know, you can make them in every color. You can put crystals down there at the bottom. It'd be really cute. Now for these black ones, I love the way they turned out. I've used those um, Mylar, you know, big. I think it's kind of like a big glitter. I don't know what you call it. I've used them in a lot of projects. And as I said, you can put that um, on a backing if you want to, but people like their earrings pretty light. So for these, I just added a little bitty uh, glue-on bail. Sometimes they call them spoon bails with some uh, super glue. Super glue is a great um, method of bonding metal to plastic. You can't use super glue for everything, but if I clamp it like that, it's a super good bond, especially for a piece this light, and I haven't had any of them go bad. See that brush on my super glue is pretty sad, isn't it? So here are our projects um, that we made today. It took me about, oh gosh, I played around a lot, so it took me several hours to make these. And it was so enjoyable. And there's our turtle. And as you see, he's nice and flexible. He's going to stick to the window. You can make all kinds of different ones. And it's so much fun. And um, there's our earrings. And... This is a little uh, zipper pull. And see that little finding on top? I clamped that down with super glue. That's uh, just a half of a toggle clasp. It's got a really nice strong loop in the top that I can hang from a zipper. And I've got my little, little delicate butterfly and a charm at the bottom there. And that was super fun to make. The kids love that and they're so sweet. So that was that easy. I hope you get a chance to give this a try. And there's a little heart to say goodbye. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.